I'm near Bex Hanger, uh, which is just outside Deal in Kent, you know the area, and I am in the middle of nowhere. Um, I came out here, I'm not sure entirely why, just sort of wanted to go for a walk. What I found very interesting, which you probably wouldn't know unless you actually lived in Bex Hanger, is just how weird and abandoned this place is. So, this is where one of the mine buildings would have been, and uh, there's not really very much to see here. Let's, uh, let's go and have a look over here. Over here is this field, and it is really enormous. Obviously there used to be some mine working buildings here, but um, it is an absolutely vast field. You get some quite significant buildings in here, um, and there is absolutely nothing. It's just a sort of area and some tracks and, and a bag. There's stuff going on over here. There's a business park and some houses in, this is actually Bet's Hanger, but all this land and more importantly all this road are unused. So let's actually go and have a look and see what we can find up this road. There are some really odd things, like this sort of bench with a dog race bin next to it. I mean, it's it's architecturally quite weird looking. Yeah, there's a sort of uh, precast concrete element to it. It's quite Soviet. The other thing about this road is it's in really, really good condition. There are speed bumps. There's tactile paving here. And there are street lamps. I don't know whether these come on at night. It's not the night. Uh, at this point in the road, we have some paths that, uh, pedestrianised paths that lead off. We've got more. There's tactile paving. It's really excellent quality. Now, what's particularly strange about this area is that I've lived in Deal for years and I've never heard anyone ever say, oh, I'm just popping up to Bet's Hanger to, to go take my dog for a walk or, or anything really. I mean, obviously there are people who need to come to Bet's Hanger because they live here. So that's about it. Uh, this is actually the top of one of the, uh, the shafts here. Here we are. This is uh, number two shaft and it's... Uh, 739 metres deep. And this is sort of an area. The best way I can put it. Some more very nice benches. Just looking incredibly tired now and underutilised. And um, yeah, some, some gravel. And, and down there is the road with a little path. I don't know if that's an official path. No, it's not. It's just a path made by dog walkers. And it's just up here. Um, that is the most bizarre area that I've ever really come across in Kent is this thing. Wait for it. I mean, honestly, what on earth is this? It looks like some sort of modernist prayer area that you find uh, in an architecture uh, magazine or something like that. But in fact, it's, it's not. It's, it's really bizarre. It is the top of I believe number one mine shaft and this one was 687.65 meters deep and seems remarkably accurate to me but I mean look at this thing it's made out of um timber I mean is this some sort of prayer area I mean it's, it's very well, it's idyllic, it's lovely actually, but it feels like it's about to fall down. This uh, decking uh, is bouncy because it's rotten. These timbers up here look uh, rotten. I mean, it's, lo it's really quite lovely, but um, it seems to be more popular with mosquitoes than humans. And over here we've got some uh, more concrete benches, which are Again, always very attractive, I think. And a, a weird sort of abandoned 
State Park, which I presume isn't actually abandoned, it's just, well, nobody uses it anymore, or if they do, it's not today, and today is Saturday in, uh, well, late spring, early summer, so now really would be the time to use it. I have to say, even though I'm rather curious about uh, this place, it is very lovely to walk around some nice shaded areas like this with some young wood and uh, lots of nettles, but never mind. Um, good paths and a good uh, sort of variety of scenery. It's very peaceful and idyllic. But I mean, I am very curious as to what really happened here because clearly a lot of money was spent on providing pathways and roadways and lighting and it sort of general infrastructure, nothing has happened and I think, judging by Google Maps, this has been like this for about 20 years now, um, so I know the mine closed in uh, around 1990, I think it was late 80s actually, but it's, you know, a good 30 odd, 35 years ago, and then I think it laid abandoned with abandoned colliery buildings and then something seemed to have to be done about that and um, what happened was a, an awful lot of infrastructure was put in that's never been used and uh, seems like a rather waste of money. I mean look, another bench. It's extraordinary. And another junction towards the end of the road, which we're coming up to now, it does occur to me that this area would have been quite interesting historically because there was a, a railway that took the slag from uh, the mine down to the slag heap, um, which is now um, a nature reserve sort of bicycle area. But it's, um, this bit It's just completely unused, and also I mean, look, another transformer also completely devoid of any real history. Where well, there would have been some interesting hundred-year-old or so buildings, there's nothing. There's not even well, any plants really, because the uh, the foundations are preventing the the growth of uh, of anything. Some uh, free electricity down there, and um, yeah, I mean, look at this another another massive field with absolutely nothing growing on it. So I presume that people are going to tell me exactly why it is abandoned. I really would like to know more about this because I'm local to the area and I knew there used to be a mine here and a railway and power station and transformers and. You know, all that sort of stuff. Showers with men and uh, strikes and all sorts of things like that. But then the narrative has been, well, it closed and oops, well, that's a shame. It's, um, yeah, what happened to the redevelopment? And uh, what on earth is that? Well, this is the end of the road. And uh, you can see it's a proper road here, and we have another transformer, and um, it doesn't seem to be the only usage of this road, it's for horses now and again. There is this building up here, which is, again, very peculiar, so we have a large concrete apron. Well, from a brief look around, I do believe this is a wood-fired power station. Obviously, in micro-generation, the lorry would come in here, thus requiring the massive road. Uh, this is, would be on the back of the lorry. There's a conveyor belt at the back, and then it sort of does something to the wood, pops it up, and burns it. I can see the chimneys up here. Uh, it's all in very good condition, but also definitely not in use. Neither is this large field, or indeed any of this concrete area 
remains to be seen what's around this corner, but um, holding out much hope. So at this point, just past the wood power station, the road ends. Uh, it is a little bit narrow here as well. Um, it's a single lane, single track, and that's it. The, the road has just ended in, in a field, and I believe not actually that far away from the main road. So, well, that's it. A road to nowhere, serving, well, nothing. What a pity. And uh, what a nice place. Conclusion then, it's really very odd. Bits Hanger used to be a small coal mine, um, which served East Kent, served uh, power generation primarily, it used to supply coal to Richmond Power Station just up the road. Um, there was a small amount of housing built for the coal mine, um, purpose-built housing. When the uh, the miners got kicked out of deal, um, they were all immigrants to the area, uh, in fact. But, um, I mean, there's someone living in there by the looks of things. Fair play to them. Um, so, the housing that was, was built remains. Um, one of the buildings also remains. Um, but then... The slag heap has been turned into a nature reserve, and this area, I would imagine, actually attracts a great deal of controversy um, because a huge amount of money has been spent on this road. Not sure by whom, but it's certainly not being used, and well, you could have quite a a thriving amount of businesses or houses up here. Um, and this is all brownfield land. Um, it wouldn't be suitable for growing food or anything like that. So not really sure what the problem is. Why it hasn't been developed. Um, but it's here. Nobody seems to talk about it. Nobody really seems to know much about it um, but uh, certainly would be an interesting place to develop but it's a very nice place at the moment to come for a walk I mean where else can you just walk down the middle of a road and be absolutely certain you're not going to get run over so uh, yes if you're in East Kent maybe pop down to Betts Hanger there's good parking and um, be surprised at what you'll find